Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Spanish chorizo stuffed chicken breast. That's right, welcome to another episode of how to make boneless, skinless chicken breast less boring. And if there's one thing I've learned over the years, if you want to make something less boring, stuff it with slices of sausage. And yes, we have combined chicken and sausage in the past with wonderful results, but this might be the most successful pairing so far. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by stirring some crushed garlic and a little bit of freshly chopped oregano into some olive oil. And we're doing this because before we stuff it with sausage, we want to massage our chicken with the garlic and herb. And it's a proven scientific fact that a massage is not as good without the oil. Oh yeah, it's just not the same. So what we'll do is give that a quick stir and then set it aside, at which point we can move on to the slicing of the sausage, Spanish style chorizo sausage to be exact. And what we'll do is take a nice sharp knife and start slicing this relatively thinly. And for each chicken breast, depending on the size, we're gonna need like eight or nine slices per portion, which is about an ounce, give or take. And while I love the chorizo, any similar sausage would work, or something like an andouille or linguisa, or even pepperoni if you have some around. So feel free to adapt as you see fit. I mean, you are after all the David West of what you think will make this breast the best. But no matter what you use, once that's cut, we need to prep our chicken breast so that we have somewhere to stuff it. And what I have here are two rather large, boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And I would say about eight to 10 ounces each would be ideal. And what we'll do is take a thin, sharp knife and we're gonna start making cuts, starting at the smaller pointy end. And we want these cuts at a 45 degree angle. And we wanna leave about a quarter to a half inch uncut on either side. And we also don't wanna go all the way through. Although if we did, that would not be a deal breaker. But anyway, the point is try to stop before you poke all the way through. And we wanna do these cuts about an inch apart, which means for chicken breasts this size, we will probably be able to get five slashes per breast. So that one's looking pretty good for the first one. Right, usually with this kind of thing, it takes you one to get it down. But as long as we're spacing those cuts as shown, and we're cutting at a 45 degree angle, and we're not going all the way through, and we're leaving a little bit of the chicken uncut on either side, as you're about to see, these incisions are gonna be the perfect place to put our chorizo. But before we sausage, we have to salt. So let's go ahead and apply a very generous sprinkling on both sides, which might look like too much, but it's not. That is the proper amount of salt for a 10 ounce chicken breast, which unfortunately a lot of home cooks don't know, which is exactly why the chicken tastes better at the restaurant. But anyway, once our chicken's seasoned, we can grab our garlic and herb oil and we'll spoon that over the top. And then once that's been applied, we wanna take our spoon and or fingers, and we wanna make sure all that goodness gets into all those cuts. And then besides flavoring internally, we wanna make sure the exterior is coated as well. And then once that's been accomplished, we can grab our chorizo, and we can start sliding our sausage into those cuts. And we're only gonna be able to fit one piece of sausage in the first cut. But for the rest, we should be able to get two, and these slices of sausage do not have to go all the way in. Okay, they should be mostly covered with chicken, but if a little bit's poking out, that is fine. In fact, I think if we can see a little bit, that makes the final appearance even more interesting. But we're gonna wanna be careful too much doesn't poke out, since as these chicken breasts bake and contract, that could theoretically cause our sausage to pop out, and then we would have some major problems. Actually, I'm just kidding. That would not even be that big of a deal. But if you slice your chicken anywhere close to the way I did here, you really shouldn't have any problems. And that's it, once our chicken's been chorizoed, we can transfer that into a pan, making sure the bottom of the chicken has a nice coating of oil to help prevent sticking. And speaking of oil, if there's any extra on the plate, make sure to drip it over the top. Oh, and in case you're wondering, you can cook this in a roasting pan or a baking dish. But because I'm planning on making an incredible sherry pan sauce when these are cooked, I like to go with something like this that we can put right directly on the flame. All right, that is just gonna make things easier. And then before we apply the finishing touches, I'm gonna take the back of a spoon and make sure these tops are nice and smooth and neat, which I could have done with my fingers, but I've already washed my hands like 15 times during the filming, so I went spoon. And then to finish these off, I like to dust over a little bit of fine breadcrumb, 
since breadcrumbs love to absorb moisture, and we're definitely going to have a little bit of very delicious moisture coming out of those cuts. And while I don't know exactly how much is going to soak in, I do know it's more than none. So we will do a light sprinkling of that, followed by a little bit of freshly and finely grated Reggiano Parmesan, which is going to add a little bit of extra richness and a little more savoriness. And it also looks kind of nice once he's roast. And yes, extra credit if you use some Manchego cheese. But anyway, after grating over a little bit of that, these are now ready to transfer into the center of a 475 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes or until our chicken's cooked through and looks like this. Oh yeah, now that is an interesting looking roast chicken breast. But anyway, once those come out, we will remove those to a plate and we will loosely cover those with foil and we will turn the heat under our pan up to medium high. And while our chicken rests for a few minutes, we will make a nice pan sauce. And we'll do that by adding a couple of tablespoons of sherry vinegar, plus a nice splash of sherry wine. And we'll season that with a little bit of freshly ground black pepper, as well as a pinch of salt. And we'll give that a stir, and then we'll let it cook for a few minutes, or until those liquids reduce by about half, and slightly sort of start to thicken up. Oh, and I almost forgot to cover the most important lesson in this video. Whenever we use something like this in the oven, when we pull it out, we put a towel on the handle, and that towel stays there until the pan is cool. All right, be careful, don't let it catch on fire. But if you don't have a towel there, someone will grab the handle, and they will get burned, and it will be your fault. So as we say in the business, keep the towel on the handle so you don't get burned like Randall. And who's Randall? Just some guy that got burned grabbing a handle that did not have a towel. So please be careful. But anyway, once those liquids have reduced by about half, we'll go ahead and pour any accumulated juices from our plate back into the pan, and we will swirl those in, and we'll reduce our heat to the lowest setting, at which point we will stir in two tablespoons of cold butter that we've cubed up. And when you add cold butter to a hot acidic reduction, and you keep it moving until it all disappears, whether that's by stirring or shaking the pan or both, you will end up with a perfectly emulsified pan sauce, which means it will have a nice, thick, luxurious texture, and the fat from the butter will not separate. And if everything goes according to plan, once you're done, it should look like this. And once it does, we can turn off the heat, and we can toss in a little bit of freshly chopped Italian parsley. If we want, it's optional. And that's it, once that's been stirred in, we can plate up our chicken and spoon that amazing looking sauce over the top, and while this chicken would certainly be flavorful and delicious enough to serve on its own, I think taking the extra couple minutes to make the pan sauce really does take this up to the next level. And we go from really nice home cooking to what we call in the business, fine dining. But anyway, after saucing, I took a few pictures and then I grabbed a fork and knife and sliced in to what is just about the least boring, boneless, skinless chicken breast you will ever have. All right, thanks to that extremely flavorful and fatty chorizo, and all those other things we did, this chicken has been flavored from the inside out. And above and beyond the amazing taste, that sausage and garlic oil we made has helped keep our chicken beautifully moist and succulent. Okay, chicken breast is so popular because it's so lean, but the bad part is, because of the lack of fat, it can get dry and tough very easily. But here, thanks to that chorizo, which is like 50% fat, that is not a problem. Oh, and speaking of fattiness and richness, because this chicken is those things, and we topped it with a beautifully buttery pan sauce, I went ahead and paired this with a simple tomato salad. Although if I'm being totally honest, I would have much preferred some nice potato croquetas or some patatas bravas. But anyway, the salad was fine, allegedly. And the Spanish chorizo stuffed chicken breast was way, way, way more than fine. It was actually one of the tastiest things I've eaten in a long time, which is why. I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.